Thank you very much, President Arnold. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So when I was a kid, I really, really loved pirates. I had uh, the eye patch and a little toy sword and a skill player. I used to read a lot of pirate books. And at some point in my life, someone had told me that early in the world's conception, it was entirely covered by water. And in my five-year-old logical mind, that meant it was also covered by pirates. <laughs> also in my train of thinking, it also meant that if the world was once covered in pirates, the world is also now covered in buried treasure. So I went out to my backyard and there was a dirt patch by our garden. I took a shovel a lot like this. I have to admit, I'm somewhat of a fraud. This is not the real shovel. Don't judge me. I hope you still enjoy my speech. But it was a shovel a lot like this. It was blue and it, I, I went out and I, I started digging for buried treasure in my backyard. Now, obviously, I didn't find buried treasure. And when I first started telling the story, I was about 14 years old. I remember I told somebody's story and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was out there for about a month. I'd go out there for hours. I had like a 30 foot hole. And Mom's like, no, you're out there for like 15 minutes and you, you scraped around the dirt, but you were real, you were real passionate about it. <laughs> and I was, I really thought I was going to find buried treasure. Right in my backyard. And the thing is, a lot of you probably came to Eureka because this is your backyard. A lot of you are probably from the Eureka area, the Peoria area, Bloomington, maybe El Paso. And you probably didn't come here thinking there's treasure there. You probably came here because it's, it's a decent school, you can get a four-year education, and you're close enough to run home, and your mom will buy you ramen noodles and gas. <laughs> Speaking of mom, if you watch this, I need gas money. <laughs> But the fact is that people have been finding treasure here on the Eureka College campus for years. Now, if you take a step back to last year, almost exactly a year, Sam Durley threw for 736 yards in a football game, which if you've gone here, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of probably more than you'd like to. But it's a big deal. He threw for 736 yards, which is a national NCAA record across all divisions, not just Division Three, across all divisions, and he did that here. He played football for Eureka High School before that with Coach Barth. And when he came here, he probably wasn't thinking, Eureka's going to be the place I set a record at. He probably thought, it's close, I love Coach Barth, this will be a good experience. But he set a record because he dug deep enough here at Eureka College to find that. A shovel fell and hit me in the leg. But he came here, and he dug deep enough and he set a record. Now, you go back before that, even a little bit, and uh, Dr. Rodriguez had made a post on one of his Facebook pages about a student from Japan who, after leaving here, after graduating, started a metal band that is achieving international success, and he's currently traveling across Europe. Now, I don't know that Dr. Hennon teaches a class on metal. I'm sure he doesn't. If he did, I would have taken it by now, but the point is that he learned things here that let him achieve success in the area that he really wanted to achieve it in, and he's doing it right now, because of the treasure he found here. Now you go back even further than that, we go back to the 1950s, you find the Altmans, who are still around campus very often today, and they're an adorable couple, and I will keep my man card for saying that. <laughs> they're absolutely adorable, they met here in the 1950s, they're still together, and they're still around campus because they love this campus because they dug deep enough to find the treasure in each other here. There's a motto to Eureka that I, I didn't actually know about when I first came in. I had seen it, but it didn't click that that was like a motto. And it's Eureka, I found it. And that's so true here. And when you really start thinking about it, and hopefully in four years, when you really reflect back on this, you're going to realize that you found something here that you didn't know was here. And I think we've missed, we didn't talk about the construction worker from Dixon, Illinois, who came here and led a student strike, and in a chapel, not very far from us right now, stood up on a stage and spoke to students about this strike. Now, the world does not remember that strike. The world does not remember his speech. Mike Murtaugh, John Morris remember it, and they, they can tell you the whole story. We are out some time. <laughs> but the point is that he remembered it, and he quoted that moment 
as the moment where he realized that his voice could influence people. He found that treasure here right on that stage. And you as an individual can go and speak on that stage where Ronald Reagan figured out that he had a voice that could influence people, which he then took to tell Gorbachev to tear down a wall that had been dividing a nation for years. And he learned that here. He learned that his voice had that power here on campus. And that's fantastic. That's amazing. Now, honestly, this is a great, great campus. And these words that I'm saying to you right now, I didn't just write for a speech. I didn't just write them for a speech. I, it, they're not just words. It's their ideas that I want you all to really consider while you're here. So you're not just existing on this campus. So you don't just walk around, get a four-year degree, and leave and forget about it. I want you to consider these ideas while you're here. And I want you to change things on this campus and in the world. You might be thinking, okay, 1930 is a long time ago. The world's a very different place. But the world stage that we have right now could really use a lot of the lessons he learned on that stage in the chapel. And that's fantastic. You know, if there's one thing I've learned in three years at this college, it's that four years might just seem like a speck in the entire spectrum of your life. But the four years you spent at college are some of the most important years of your entire life. And that the more you make of life while you're here, the more your life's going to be when you leave here. Thank you very much.